so this unit um, or module is on uh, uh, so-called Leontiev models. Leontiev was a uh, Russian economist who won the Nobel Prize in 1972, I think it was, uh, for his, uh, this work that he did using linear algebra to model the growth of entire economies. So um, it was really designed to look at the economy as a whole rather than just one particular business or, or even just one particular industry. Um, so let, let me just jump in with a really, really simple example of, a, of an entire economy. Think of an Amish oat farmer who plows his uh, field with horses and grows broccoli. Okay, And uh, if you think about it, you could, you could probably get by with nothing but um, broccoli and horses. Um, what I'm actually going to say is that the, uh, the, the two products that he, he makes are uh, oats. Oh, I'm sorry, not, not broccoli, oats. He's going to uh, grow oats. Uh, which he and his horses can eat, and he's going to, and that the horses will produce horse manure that he can use to fertilize his oat fields. So if you think about it, this is just about everything he needs to keep going forever, right? He's got the oats, he's got the fertilizer, he can keep growing oats, he can keep feeding the horses and his family. Um, so it, it, it's a miniature self-sustaining economy, and, and that's what Leontief models are designed to, to, um, uh, uh, to study. Um, so, okay, so we've got only two goods. Of course, in, in a real economic example, you might have hundreds or even thousands of, of goods, um, or you, you might uh, break the economy down at, at a higher level and just say, well, uh, maybe you've got the, the, uh, the mining industry and the manufacturing industry and the computer industry and things like that, and you could just break it down into separate sectors of the economy, right? But in any event, normally you'd have more than two, um, two goods that, that you're, you're studying, but we just want to start off with a nice simple example. Um, so I'm going to make an a assumption here that it takes one-tenth of a ton of oats and half a ton of manure to grow one ton of oats. Okay, So you need a tenth of a ton of oats you know, just for the seeds, I guess. I, I, I didn't really look this up on Wikipedia or anything, but I'm, I'm just going to make up the figure that... Um, uh, the seeds can uh, uh, amount to like one tenth of the weight of the oats, probably even less than that, but uh, I'll just go with a tenth. And that we need a half a ton of manure to fertilize the fields. Okay, so that's what it takes to grow a ton of oats. It takes one tenth of a ton from the previous year's growth and half a ton of manure. And in addition, I'm going to assume, and I think this I did not look up, but I'm pretty sure it's accurate, it takes one ton of oats to produce a ton of manure. Okay, so those are, those are my assumptions. And so, you know, we, we can say that X1 is going to be the number of tons of oats that are produced, and X2 is going to be the number of tons of manure that are produced. Um, and then what we do is we set up this matrix here, uh, which is basically a recipe matrix. So, so the way this works is that the first row is the recipe for, for producing one ton of oats. So as I said, to produce one ton of oats requires uh, 0.1 tons of uh, oats as seed, and it requires half a ton of manure as fertilizer. Whereas to produce one ton of fertilizer, and that's our second good here, requires one ton of oats, and no manure at all is required to produce manure, right? So uh, the ingredients are just one and zero. So that's the recipe for a ton of manure. So, uh, the anatomy of the A matrix, by the way, this is called the technology matrix in the um, uh, context of Leontief theory, called the technology matrix. It's basically just the matrix of, of recipes for how you make each of the products. So, I, again, just to emphasize, um, the, the uh, uh, columns in this matrix stand for the outputs. So, so, it's basically a table of recipes, right? And the columns represent the recipes for producing each product and the rows represent the ingredients. Now, one thing that's important to notice about Leontief theory is that the rows, uh, of the materials, are the same as the outputs, or the same as the products. So in this case, we're producing oats and manure, and we're also using oats and manure in order to produce more oats and manure, right? That's what we mean by saying it's a self-sustaining economy. It uh, produces everything it needs for further production, right? It doesn't need to import anything from outside. 
Um, so it, it, that means it is potentially confusing because the rows have the same labels as the columns, but you have to remember that the rows stand for the inputs and the columns stand for the outputs. So what this means is to produce one unit of oats requires 0.1 units of oats as input and 0.5 units of manure as inputs. Whereas to produce one unit of manure as an output requires one unit of oats as an input and one unit of, um, uh, sorry, zero units of manure, okay? So um, uh, keep that in mind, rows are inputs, columns are outputs. And in, in this case, our technology matrix, such as it is, is this. It's a, just a simple two by two matrix. So the um, <clears throat> importance of the technology matrix is that if you matrix multiply it by a, uh, a column vector of the um, uh, uh, production, what's called the production schedule. So X1, remember, is how much of uh, the first product oats that we're planning to make, and X2 is how much of the second product we're planning to make. So this vector goes by the name of the production schedule because it's how much of each product we're planning to make. And if we uh, matrix multiply the technology matrix times the production schedule in this way, what we get is, well, uh, I, here I actually wrote out what you would get if you multiplied it out. If you multiply this row times this column, what you get is 0.1 times x1 plus 1 times x2. That would be 0.1 times the, um, the uh, um, n uh, number of tons of oats that we're going to grow, plus 1 times the um, uh, amount of manure that we're planning to, to produce, right? We have to plan everything, right? So we're going to plan how much manure we're going to produce. And if you add this up, this is the total number of oats used, right? It's all the oats used up in growing oats and also all the oats that are used up in uh, producing future manure, right? So adding these up gives you the total amount of oats used. Similarly, when you multiply the second row times x1, x2, you get 0.5x1 plus 0x2. In other words, you get half a ton um, times the uh, um, amount of uh, oats we're going to grow. So this is the amount of manure that we need in order to, to um, uh, to make all the uh, oats, to fertilize all the oats. And of course, we don't use any manure in making more manure. So th this is simply the total amount of manure that's used also during the entire production process. So here's the thing to remember. When you multiply the technology matrix A times the uh, production schedule X, what you get is you get a, a, a list or a vector of uh, the total amount of each product that's used during production. So it's used internally during production. Right? So recipe matrix times a production list gives you resources used up, right? That's what that's what uh, A times X gives you. Okay. And um, uh, this is important because if you know how much you used up, then you can also figure out how much you have left over, right? If you're producing a total of X, right, uh, um, or this vector X, uh, of, uh, of each product and you subtract off how much you used up internally during the production, then what's left over is the excess and the excess, right, the, the surplus is what you're able to sell. And so you can sell your excess oats, for example, to Quaker, or you could sell your excess manure to other farmers, right, as, as fertilizer, or maybe to hobbyist uh, gardeners, right, as, uh, as fertilizer. Okay, so uh, summarizing what I just said, we could say that if you take the production schedule X, right, the list of um, uh, how much of each product you're going to be producing, minus A times X, which is a list of how much of each product you use up during production, then what's left over will be your surplus, which you can think of as the amount of each product that you're able to sell, that you don't need yourself so you can sell it. And so this difference, x minus ax, is called d, d for, the, uh, for demand. This is called the demand vector. So this is how much of each product you're able to sell to meet external demand for your products. Right? And um, uh, this is kind of the fundamental equation of Leontief theory. Uh, so ne needless to say, <clears throat> in order to solve these Leontief theory, questions, you're going to have to uh, uh, 
know this equation, right? So this, this is the one new equation you have to learn from this module, d equals x minus ax, okay? Now actually it can be written, and it is often written in three different ways, and I'll show you the way that's most useful and the one you should actually memorize. This one is easy to remember because it's logical. It says take the total production minus a times x, the amount used up during, a, during production, and what's left over is your surplus that you can solve and meet external demand. So th this is a nice, uh, clear way to remember the idea. However, it's not necessarily the most useful form of the equation. This is probably the most useful form of, of, the, Leonti of the equation for Leontief theory. This is the factored form. What we've done is we noted that there's a common factor of x on the right side of this equation, so we factor the x out. If you factor the x out from a times x, of course you're left with a. But if you factor the x out from an x by itself, uh, what you get is I, the identity matrix, right? In ordinary uh, uh, um, algebra, if you factor an X from an X, you'd be left with one, but this is matrix algebra, so you're not left with one, you're left with I, the identity matrix, okay? So the factored form of the equation, D equals the quantity I minus A times X. This is actually the most useful form of the um, of the Leontief theory, uh, equation. And uh, if you just want to memorize one, this is the one to memorize, right? That's the most useful. Uh, a third form of it is when you solve uh, the second equation, take the second equation and solve for x in terms of d. The way you'd solve for x would be to multiply on both sides by the inverse, the matrix inverse of i minus a. And if you do that, the i minus a will inverse will, uh, will cancel the i minus a on the right and you'll know that x equals i minus a inverse times d on the left. Right? So this is a, a useful um, form if you're interested in solving for x uh, using a matrix inverse. So to summarize, form 1 is easy to understand. Form 2 um, is, is a, 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 a... you can actually use f this form 2 in order to solve for uh, uh, x in terms of d, you can also use it to solve for d in terms of x, because clearly, if you know what a is and you know what x is, you can just plug them in here and then you'll figure out what d is. So in some questions, they will give you a and they will give you x and they'll ask you to find d, and you can use this equation for that. Uh, in most questions, though, and in most real life situations, uh, the, 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 the scenario is that you know what demand you want to be able to meet, right? You know what your customers are asking to buy, and you, you have to set a production schedule that will meet the external demand. And so uh, in, in those sorts of problems, you're given D and you have to solve for X, right? You're given D and also you know A, but you have to solve for X. Now, you can use the, the third version of the equation for that if, if, you're, uh, uh, if you want to solve for x. However, you can also use the second version because you can convert this matrix equation into an augmented matrix form and then row reduce to solve for x. And I'll do an example of that in a, in a few moments. But that, so this is why I say that the second version is actually the, the most useful version uh, of all. Let me put a big orange box around that because that is the most useful uh, version of the equation. Here we go. Um, oops. So, um, uh, however, they all have their uses, and um, uh, in, in, in if you if you ever see this subject discussed anywhere else, they may very well talk about the third version uh, of the equation as well. But I'm going to focus on the second version. Okay, so let's go back to the um, uh, Amish oak, oat farmer. Uh, in his case, the uh, technology matrix A was this guy, right? And of course, uh, because there are two, two products here, uh, the technology matrix is two by two, and therefore we also want to use the two by two sized identity, identity matrix. So this I minus A that is so important in this uh, this form of the equation, i minus a in our case is equal to this, right? So we, we subtract the corresponding entries and we get this. So this is our i minus a. Now, what good is that? Well, as a simple example, suppose uh, we know that the farmer is currently growing 100 tons of oats 
and uh, six, and he's producing six tons of horse manure, 60 tons of horse manure, right? And the question is, with those production rate or those production levels, right, with that production schedule, uh, how much of each will he be able to sell? Well, uh, this is a type of question where we're given the X matrix, right? These numbers here, the 100 tons of oats and the 60 tons of horse manure, those are the uh, elements in the X matrix, the production schedule, right? How much we're actually producing. And here is I minus A. So we can use this, uh, ooh, this second equation back here, right? In order to uh, uh, figure out what demand we'll be able to meet. So our X is 160. Um, we've figured out what I minus A is, it's this. So therefore D will be equal to this I minus A matrix times uh, 160. And we use matrix multiplication to multiply this out. On top, we're actually gonna get, I think 90 minus 60. So I think we're gonna get 30 on top. And on the bottom, we're gonna get negative 50 plus 60 is gonna be 10, okay. So this tells us that uh, if he sticks to that production schedule, 100 tons of oats, 60 tons of manure, he will have 30 tons of oats left over that he can sell, and he'll have 10 tons of manure left over that he can sell. Now, as I mentioned before, this is not the most realistic sort of problem because um, uh, normally the situation is reversed. You know what the demand is and you have to set the production schedule. So let's take a look at a problem like, like that. So uh, suppose now you're at the uh, Amish oak farmer and you know that there's demand uh, from Quaker oats for 50 tons of oats and there's demand from uh, farmers for 15 tons of horse manure. Um, how much of each of those should you plan to produce in order to be able to meet that demand exactly, right? You, you don't really wanna waste anything so you wouldn't wanna produce more than you can sell. But if, if you can sell this much, how much should you produce in order to, to, uh, to, uh, to meet the demand exactly? Right? So the situation here is that we know D, the demand D, oops, we know the demand D, but the, uh, um, uh, which is, by the way, which is 50-15, right? There's 50, um, the demand for oats is 50 tons and the demand for manure is 15 tons. Notice, by the way, in, the, in these problems that we're always consistent about which is the uh, product number one and which is product number two. In this case, we decided that oats was going to be product number one and manure was going to be product number two, and we stuck with that throughout. So whenever we were looking at either the rows of the columns, the oats uh, always came first and the manure always came second. Okay, so we know the demand, but we're trying to figure out what the production schedule should be. How much of each product should we plan to produce? Now, to, to um, solve a question like this, you can either use Form 2 or Form 3 from that previous slide. I'm going to use Form 2. So in Form 2, we, uh, we had this D equals I minus A times X, right? Just as we did last time. Um, again, plugging in what we know here, we know I minus A is the same as before because A is the same as before. And now we know what D is, but we don't know what X is. We want to solve for X. Um, now, you could, of course, solve this by multiplying both sides by the inverse matrix, and that would be equivalent to using the, th the third form of the equation. But let me show you what's, what's usually a better way is to just use row reduction. Um, remember that when you solve matrix equations, for example, suppose you wanted to solve an equation like P times X equals Q, right? One way to solve it would be multiplying by P inverse on both sides. But another way to solve it is to recognize that this is equivalent to a, um, a, a, an augmented matrix problem, right? This is equivalent to a problem involving a, a, an augmented matrix where you have P on the left and Q on the right. And then if you row reduce this, you can find the solution. So we can solve uh, this problem using row reduction instead of using a matrix inverse. And in many cases, this might actually be easier and preferable. Now, maybe this, I, I, I should qualify it. This might actually be an exception because there is a nice, neat formula for finding the inverse of a two by two matrix, right? So this might be a case where, where you might want to actually just use that formula to find the inverse of the matrix and solve it that way. But if, if the matrix is larger and if you have to do it by hand, it might actually be preferable to, to do 
row reduction. So let me, let me show you how to do it using row reduction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up an augmented matrix like this, where I have these coefficients, right? The, the, the coefficient matrix times the unknown. The coefficients go on the left. The constants go on the right. Right? So, so this matrix corresponds to Q, and this matrix corresponds to P over here. So what we get is an augmented matrix like this. Right? We've got the, the coefficient matrix on the left, we have the constants on the right, and then if we just row reduce this matrix, we'll have our solution. So, okay, so let's go through the row reduction process. I won't spend too much time on this, but um, uh, I think what I decided to do was uh, it, it, I decided it would be easier to switch rows around because if I have the, uh, the negative 0.5 on top, that's actually very easy to turn into a 1. I can just multiply by negative 2, whereas turning a 0.9 into a 1 is a little bit uglier. It's going to get into fractions. Okay, So I just switched rows around, switched the first and second row around. Then I just multiplied the, the first row through by negative 2. And now I can use the 1 here to cancel the 0.9. So I'll take negative 0.9 times row 1 and add it into row 2. And when you do that, you get this. And then we can turn this into a number. Now, actually, the, the numbers do not work out neatly in this, in this case. We're going to get decimals in our answer or fractions. So now what I have to do is divide the, um, the second row by 0.8 or multiply by 1 over... 0.8. Oh, and and by, by the way, 0.8 is 4 fifths. So 1 over 0.8 is 5 fourths. It's a reciprocal. So if you multiply the second row through by 5 fourths, you get a, a 1 in this position. And then finally, now that I've got the 1 here, I can cancel the negative 2 and make that a 0. I'll take positive 2 times row 2, add it to row 1, and I get this finally. Right? So it's a bit of a mess, although these fractions aren't too bad. Um, so here's what the, what the solution looks like. Um, this is our solution for x. This is what the production schedule should be. If you convert these into decimals, they're not really too bad. Uh, we need 222 and a half tons of oats, and we need 96 and a quarter tons of manure. So that's how, how much um, uh, production we should schedule. And if we schedule production for, for those levels, then uh, at the end of the year, we'll have exactly the amount uh, needed uh, to sell, right? We'll be able to sell, what, what did I say, 15 tons? What was the problem? Uh, 15 tons, uh, sorry, 50 tons of oats, and we'll be able to sell 15 tons of manure, right? That will be the exact amount we'll have left over. So the main thing to remember from this lecture is that there are two types of problems you're likely to see. Uh, uh, it, you know, that come up on Leontief theory, and both of them can be solved using this same equation, d equals i minus a times x. Okay, so the first type of problem is when you're given x and a, and you're asked to find d, and then you just plug everything in, do the matrix multiplication, i minus a times x, and you got your answer d. Um, a more usual type of problem will be when you're given d, and you're given a, and, and then you're asked to find x, and in that case, what you do is you, uh, uh, st you can think of it in terms of this equation, but then the first step will be to convert this equation into an augmented matrix where you have I minus A on the left and you have D on the right. And then you row reduce this. And if all goes well, which it should, uh, you'll eventually get the identity matrix on the left and you'll have the X vector you were looking for on the right. And then this will be your, your solution. That'll be the, the uh, x vector you're looking for. Okay, so there's really only two types of problems and you can use this uh, equation in the or 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 orange box for both of them. Uh, just have to remember that if, if you're trying to solve for x, you do have to do a little row reduction. Or alternatively, you could use, um, you could use uh, uh, equation three and, and compute the inverse matrix. That is an alternate way of doing it.